FMGs, my dear friends, exam is over. Let's have an analysis of the recent FMG exam, which was on 31st August 2020. The questions are said to be extremely difficult to answer. We can say the most difficult exam so far. We spoke to many students and most of them appear disappointed. You all must be feeling very dejected and some of you may be finding it extremely hard to accept what has happened. But stay positive and don't let your fears and apprehension drive you to a path of no return. Think of your family, your friends and many of friends who are in the same situation as you are. Be each other's strength and seek help if you are unable to deal with this stress. Your health and life are much precious and much beyond this exam. This was an unusual and unexpected kind of question paper. See, if you apply for USMLE or PLAB, after registration, you will get a fixed syllabus and the pattern of exam. Even for FMG, there used to be a set pattern of questions according to which all medicos prepared. But in this exam, it was completely different. Anyways, what is done is done. This was not the first unpleasant surprise of 2020. So I would say it was unfair for medicos. One possible explanation is that maybe this exam was an orientation of next exam. But I hope there will be more clarity on next exam from the board of examination. If there will be some grace marks officially, it will be great for everyone. Right now, I wish to address all the medicos who attempted the exam this time and all medicos who are going to write exam in future. First of all, medicos who have written exam this time, after so much hard work, please stay cool and hope for the best. Many clinical questions were there and you might have marked the right answer as per your intellectual aptitude. Many answers may be right which you do not anticipate. You have done your job, now please have rest for a few days and then start studying again. If you pass the exam, then it's awesome. And your preparation will be continued for PG exams. If by chance you unfortunately do not pass this FMG exam, then you will not be wasting your time at all. Since we are in this educational field, we analyze questions every time and accordingly we guide our medicos. This time also, this is our responsibility to guide our medicos in a right direction. If we notice the questions of last five years, FMG has evolved a lot from facts-based one-liners to image-based and then clinical scenarios. We should understand at this point that days are gone when one-liners used to be the main pattern of FMG exams. In present scenario, FMG and PG entrance examinations are completely same in terms of difficulty. We all have to upgrade ourselves and increase the level of preparation. First of all, let's understand the pattern of questions. I'm going to give you one example of biochemistry. Old pattern of question, fluoride inhibits which enzyme of glycolysis? And your options are phosphofructokinase, hexokinase, enolase, and pyruvate kinase. I'm sure you know the answer, right? Answer is C. But now, new pattern of question. Have a look. A 45-year-old male presents to a clinic with complaints of weight loss, frequent urination, increased thirst, and appetite. His father had similar symptoms who was on metformin for the last seven years. Clinician wants to check his sugar level, and lab technician has collected his blood sample in the given tube. This sample tube has one agent which ensures that further breakdown of glucose will not happen so that accurate level of glucose can be estimated. Which of the following is a right statement related to this clinical scenario? And your options are, option A is potassium oxalate inhibits enolase enzyme. Option B, this is a plain tube which does not have any extra ingredients. Option C, sodium fluoride inhibits enolase enzyme. And option D, sodium fluoride has no role. See, this is a question of biochemistry, but it has asked in an integrated manner. 
If you see this question, first of all, there are medical symptoms and history which suggest endocrinology, internal medicine. After that, some information is there related to metformin, which we already have learned in pharmacology that metformin is an important drug for diabetes. And now one more information is there related to lab diagnosis, this gray color tube. Is there anything special about this gray tube? Yes, in this gray tube, there is sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate. I want to make you clear that sodium fluoride inhibits enolase enzyme and assure that there won't be further breakdown of glucose and potassium oxalate works as an anticoagulant. In this manner, even after some time, we can have the accurate measurement of glucose. Now, I'm sure that you understand the importance of fluoride in this gray tube. This was the case scenario which has integration of internal medicine, pharmacology, lab diagnosis. But examiner is asking you the question of biochemistry. Yes, we have learned in biochemistry that fluoride inhibits enolase enzyme in glycolysis. But what is the significance of this clinically? This is the question and this is the new normal now. Please upgrade yourself. I gave only one example, but wherever you are learning, please do concentrate on non-clinical subjects and practice them in a clinical fashion. Your mentors will support you. Old pattern of finishing eight to nine subjects or only 14 subjects are not going to help you anymore. Finish all 19 subjects so that you shall be able to understand the integrated pattern of all questions. And yes, you need to have clinical understanding of each topic. And remember, this time so many questions were asked from orthopedics, radiology, dermatology, and psychiatry. So now onwards, don't underestimate any subject. Medicos who are preparing for a December exam, please understand it well. Your way of preparation should be upgraded. And foreign medicos are first to fourth year. When you come back here, you will be having next exam. So please start preparation from now itself. Next exam level will be different and more clinically oriented. And one more thing I want to share. Actually, I want to remind you that medicals who do MBBS from American medical universities have to pass USMLE as licensing exams at any cost. And it is same in many developed countries. It is there just to test all medical graduates that they have enough knowledge of medicine before they start practicing. In the similar pattern, our next exam is going to happen. See, we are living in one of the biggest nations with a population of more than a billion. We are in the need of having best doctors. Remember, we are doctors and our power is knowledge. We have to study and research for longer so that we can perform in much efficient way. In all other profession, mistakes may or may not be compensated. But in our profession, our mistakes will never be compensated. Whatever we do, we are always dealing with the risk of life and death. So please understand, we are really warriors and warriors are not made in a shortcut way. You have to study and you have to compete. You might be thrashed out right now, but you have to walk on this fire, rough and tough road. And of course, there is a competition for survival of fittest. I want to quote respected Anand sir here, Super 30. You may have many difficulties in your life. You may have many devils in your life. You have to fight with everything and every time you have to come back like a hero. Equip yourself with the best of weapons to win the war. Be prepared for whatever comes your way. This can be done by a holistic approach. Understanding and learning all subjects along with clinical aspects. Please, please upgrade yourself and accept the challenge. I wish you good luck. Thank you so much.